Hey everybody, Brian with Easy Retriever Training and in today's video I've got a real treat. I'm going to show you how I built a two dog kennel system in my garage using limited space with doggy doors going out into the backyard for their separate dog runs. Uh, I did it with two purposes in mind. One, keep my budget as low as possible and two, uh, utilize the space that I had as best as I could. We don't live on a huge lot. I needed to give my dogs, but I needed to give my dogs the, the ability to get out, stretch their legs throughout the day um, between training sessions in the morning and in the evenings when I get home from work. So. If you haven't already, please make sure you uh, subscribe, click the little button down below, ring the bell so you get notified every time I send out a new video, and uh, let's get to the uh, let's get to the how-to. Hey everybody, thanks for uh, thanks for watching the video as we go through this little process, and I share with you my my four or five day journey in building this. Uh, this kennel for my dogs, I, it, it became apparent, especially, you know, during the summer it's been fine. My kids have been here and they've been able to get the dogs out and get them the exercise that they need. But it was pretty obvious pretty quick that I was going to need to come up with some kind of a system when they go back to school that let my dogs get up and go to the bathroom, stretch their legs and, and so forth while I'm gone at work and they're gone at school. And so it was time to build this, to, to build something for them. Uh, again, like I said in the intro, I've got pretty limited space. I'm on a really small lot here in the middle of a subdivision and, uh, and so I needed to come up with something to utilize uh, uh, the back corner of a third car garage and then going out to the back, I, I was kind of limited in what I could do because the air conditioner uh, unit is out there. I needed to keep the space so that I could, you know, we could work on that if necessary. Uh, but I think I've come up with a pretty good plan. All right, let's get to build. Let's get to the build. Uh, the first thing I started with when I started when I built this was I had to find the location of the dog doors, uh, where I was going to put them. That gave me uh, an idea of where to put the uh, where I would put the divider. And like I said, originally I was going to do uh, you know five foot long kennels, and it was going to take it, and it just it didn't work out that way. So I, I measured those out. I just used a simple stud finder to find the holes. And then, uh, and then a sawzall. Uh oh, I had a little, uh, a little audio t problems there, so I'm just going to do a voiceover for the rest of this. Uh, just a couple of things. I, it'll be really obvious. I'm not a, I'm not a carpenter, so I don't know all the terminology. I'm kind of just a make it up as I go along kind of a, a carpenter. I knew what I wanted it to look like, and I knew I wanted it to be sturdy. I knew that I wanted to be able to use the workbench uh, at top of this as a workbench. So I, I made sure I relied on a stud finder. I made sure that every screw in this first, in these first two by fours went right into a stud. I'm going to use this to attach all of the rest of my supports and things for the the rest of the support for the uh, for the dog kennel is going to is going to go into this. And so I needed to make sure that it was nice and and sturdy. And then I also relied heavily on my on my levels with both my three foot and my little torpedo level. Uh, four by fours is my other supports out away from the wall. And then I just stapled cattle panel to make up the rest of the dividers. This is going to be uh, just to save me some time. And also, I, I think it kind of looks kind of cool. This is just another support for that outside panel. Uh, I guess the outside wall of the doghouse, dog kennel. Once I got all of those in place, then I, I just kind of got my, my exterior posts where I wanted them to go, measured it up. This is the cattle panel for the exterior, I guess the exterior panel. I found that it was cheaper to use electrical staples rather than getting the actual cattle panel staples. And staple them to one two by four. And then I'm gonna get my other two by four and just kind of drill it so that the cattle panel runs down in between. And you also notice on this that I've, I've offset those a little bit to make room for the 4x4 on the outside edge and then also to so that the outside 2x4 can slide up and screw into the bracing that I've attached to the wall. So now I'm just going to do this, I just did the same thing up at the top, uh, stapled it in, made sure there's room for the 4x4 and then uh, screwed on the other side of the cattle panel to hold it in place. And then to attach it, both the top and the bottom uh, screw into those exterior or those bracings that have been attached to the wall. Uh, for this piece, for this bottom piece, I'm actually going to leave it 
about three inches off the ground. That way I can, it's easy, it's gonna be easy to sweep out, it's gonna be easy to clean if there's any messes. I can also slide food bowls underneath. For my doors, I found an old crib at a, at a garage sale and thought, well, that, that looks cool and it'll be easier than trying to make one. Cattle panel for the centerpiece there to span the from the center post over to the door. Here I'm attaching the uh, the two cross beams that are going to be kind of the center supports. Make sure that it's level all the way across. Screwed it up. Got it all fixed in there. And then I went ahead and added. You can see uh, I went ahead and added some uh, roofing hangers the two by fours uh, at the other end attached to the wall just so that make sure that I'm, I'm not gonna have any give in the door there now I'm screwing this front piece in because this is what the latch for the door is gonna screw into and also to give a little bit more strength kind of give the frame for the cattle panel keep the dogs from starting to chew or pull at it I wanted to use the, the end of the crib or the side of the crib, but you can see it's too big. So I got my table saw and sawed it down to the perfect size so it'll just slide right in between those two cross beams. And then I took a, a series of blocks, just added those in so that I could tack them down into, the, uh, into that divider. I notched out another piece of two by four, just tall enough, eight, eight inches, just tall enough to go up to the top of the concrete uh, footer for the, for the garage. And then that allowed me to come out with another two by four support to keep the, the end of that divider from sliding around. I did, I got this first one put into place and realized that it was gonna be a little too flimsy. And if you're doing a dog kennel, you know that if your dog can get an inch, it's gonna try and take, he's gonna try and take a mile. And so I didn't want him to be able to push his nose through the bottom and then try and push himself all the way through. So I went ahead and once I got that one in place, I added one at the bottom just to make sure that it was nice and nice and sturdy. Here I'm just adding some more supports and you can see I'm doing the roofing hangers. Uh, just like last time I started with the toenail uh, and then got it into place. Once I got everything positioned exactly where I wanted it, I used these hangers and screwed them in. And then I'll do the same, eventually I'll do the same on the other side and get my cross, my supports in place. Tape measure, make sure everything's the right length, and then voila, there it is. There's my workbench with my two dog kennels underneath it, a two dog system. I'm just gonna use some regular uh, framing nails to get this nailed into place, just to keep it from moving around and sliding as I, as I work on it. Uh, I have toyed with the idea of using this also as a force fetch table. All right, when it comes to buying doggy doors, they're expensive, and so it was it was a challenge for me. I it was my, again, my I wanted to keep the budget down, and as I started looking at doggy doors to get big enough for my you know 95 pound Labrador, it was it was a challenge because those doors get to be 125, 150, 175 dollars a piece, and that was more than I ended up spending on the entire project. So. I decided to build my own. Make sure you watch upcoming videos. I'll put, a, I'll put a little card up here when it goes live about how I built my own doggy door to keep it sealed from weather as well as keeping it sealed from the rodents and other things that can get inside. I, also keeping my dogs protected, give them a way to get out of the, the wind. 
All right, and I also have an idea, I, an upcoming video that'll be out in the next few days uh, that will show you how I did my outdoor kennel. Uh, the dog run itself, I, I went, again, just like inside, a four foot by eight foot run, give them enough room to, to kind of stretch their legs, go to the bathroom, and then at the end of the kennel, in, just inside, I, I built a little trough funnel area where we will be able to, with the system I'm, I'm putting in place, we'll be able to almost entirely eliminate the, uh, that nasty, I, I don't know what to call it, but that nasty urine smell. So make sure you're watching for that video. I'll put a card up here as well.